Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Good morning, friends, and welcome to Virtual Children's Chapel on this second Sunday after Easter. I'm Miss Allison, and this is my best buddy, Shadow. Remember, Easter is an entire season in the church, and it lasts about 50 days. And during this season of Easter, we will hear stories about Jesus appearing to his disciples, his friends, before he goes to heaven to be with God. So before we begin our time of worship together today, let's talk about what we see on our table. First, you'll notice our altar cloth is white. And during the season of Easter, we use this color. And then we have a cross. And of course, this cross reminds us of who we worship and why we worship. We have two candles on our table. And you might also notice that there is a tall candle sitting right next to me. This tall candle is going to represent or remind us of the tall Paschal candle that we see in our nave during the season of Easter. Now we only use this Paschal candle during super special times of the church year. An example might be Christmas or during baptisms and other special services. And of course, since it's the season of Easter, we decided to celebrate by decorating our altar, our table, with these flowers right here to remind us the joy and the beauty of this Easter season. So today, friends, we are going to have a special guest join us for chapel. Her name is Deacon Lydia, and she serves as one of our seminarians at St. Mary's meaning that she's actually in school right now to learn all about church and God. And she'll be talking to us today about what an Episcopal deacon is. And so friends, let us prepare our hearts and our minds and our bodies to, for worship today. Almighty God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new promise of understanding, Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If, you're, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails on my hand and his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. 
Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Good morning, youth of St. Mary's. Many of you already know me, but my name is Lydia Simmons. And a little thing has changed since the last time I met and talked with all of you. I had the opportunity to be ordained as a deacon here at the cathedral in South Dakota. I welcome you to my home church where I am recording this from today. So I was ordained as a deacon as part of my training and formation to become a priest in the Episcopal Church. So part of that means that my uh, title has changed a little bit. So before I was just seminarian, Lydia, now a couple of different names can apply, either Reverend Lydia, Mother Lydia, or Deacon Lydia, all of which work and all of which apply to deacons. Now, I know at St. Mary's, we don't often have deacons, so today I'm here to talk a little bit about what it means to be a deacon. There are two types of deacons in the Episcopal Church. They go through the same ordination process, and they have the same job in the church. Um, just the length of time is a little different. So for myself, I was ordained to the diaconate, not as a permanent order, but as part of my process and formation to be ordained to the priesthood. I will serve and live as a deacon for six months to a year. And during that time, I will live into the role of deacon in St. Mary's and then at a job in the Black Hills in South Dakota, where I'm going in May after I leave St. Mary's. The other type of deacons are what we now call vocational deacons. These are deacons who take orders as a deacon and will live and serve as a deacon their entire career. They feel specifically called to the special type of ministry that the order of deacons holds. And so they get ordained to serve in their role as deacon for as long as they are serving the church. So now what is a deacon? I use this word a couple of times already. A deacon is someone who serves the church and the community. While the priest's primary job is to serve the congregation that she or he is assigned to, a deacon's role is to be involved in the parish and the community, connecting the two in a way that is really special. They are called to help lead outreach, do hospital visits when people are sick or if babies are born, Lots of different things that happen when you serve as a deacon. During the liturgy and the worship on Sunday mornings, a deacon traditionally does a couple of things. Because of their connection to the community and to the parish, they read the gospel on Sunday mornings. They also will read the prayers of the people as a sign of a connection to the community beyond the church. They also do the peace at the very end when we say, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And we respond as the congregation, thanks be to God. The deacons do all of these things as part of their connection from the parish to the community. Now, as deacons, there are a couple of special vestments. And since we don't have deacons that often at St. Mary's, I'm going to take a moment or two to show you them all. So the first thing that you may have noticed is a little different is I'm wearing a collar. This is similar to the collars that Father Andrew and Father Pete and Mother Sarah wear. Clergy, both deacons and priests, wear these types of collars. Sometimes they look like just a little tab, or sometimes they're all the way around like mine is. It really is up to the priest what their personal preference is when they wear those. But they wear these as a sign of the ordination vows that they took. The next thing that deacons wear is something that you see acolytes and priests alike wearing. It's called an alb. And it is the white vestment that we wear underneath all of our other vestments on Sunday mornings. 
These special vestments are made to be the base of our vestments. And they're kind of similar, if you remember seeing a baby dressed in all white at baptism, to those vestments that we wear on that day as well. The next thing that a deacon will wear is kind of like a priest. We wear what is called a stole. And a stole is a special symbol. For priests, they wear them um, straight up and down. So it'll be just like that. But deacons wear their stole crosswise over their shoulder. So this is how a deacon would wear a stole, which is different from how a priest would wear a stole straight up and down. The last piece that some churches have their deacons wear is called a dalmatic, which is a very big long word, but it's another layer of vestments. As you can see, this one matches the frontal on the altar over here. It also matches the chasuble which the priest would wear during celebrating communion. It's another layer that we put on as we approach the altar. So this one goes on over your head, and it's a big piece of fabric, and sometimes it looks a little silly going on, but it is one more layer that we wear as a sign that we are deacons. So all of these vestments on, basically are all just small representations of the orders and the role that we have in the service. Now the reading that you did with Miss Allison a little while ago from the gospel shows the story of Jesus gathering with his disciples. They were hidden, they were scared, and they were confused because Jesus had just died and they weren't certain about the resurrection yet. They didn't really know what it meant for Jesus to come back. And Jesus came among the people. For me, that's a big part of what the deacons are called to do. They are called to be among the people. And then Jesus sends the disciples out just like the deacon sends the parish out every single Sunday during the dismissal. They say, Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Jesus was the first example of a calling into the world, sending people out to do the work of God. This example is something we see every week in worship, and it's something that traditionally is done by deacons as their connection to the community and to the parish outside of the community. So all of these things together are what makes up a deacon. Now, since I'm still a pretty new deacon, I'm learning all about what my role as a deacon is and what that looks like when it comes to serving different churches and different communities. But I have seen lots of examples of people who have been de ordained deacons for decades. My entire life, I have known people who have been deacons that whole time. So it's a really big blessing to be here at my home parish and to get to learn from these deacons for this week. And then I will be coming back to St. Mary's and I will be serving as a deacon there, hopefully getting to learn more about what it means to serve in this role, both in my regular parish when I graduate seminary and at St. Mary's as well. So I hope you had a great time learning about deacons and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Friends, Shadow and I hope that you enjoyed our time of worship and wonder together today. We hope that you all continue to stay safe and happy and healthy. Please continue to enjoy this beautiful Easter season with your families and all that the outdoors has to offer. We will see you again very, very soon. Bye, friends.